Joey, this is one of the biggest investments IAC has ever made, and yet it's also an unusual one, at least for your company, because MGM is not a young company, it's not a small company, it's in a very established industry, gaming, and it has billions of dollars in physical assets, casinos. Why the departure? If you think about a lot of the things we've done, there actually can be a, a startup or a new growth story in an a older company. And we think MGM very much has that in the digital opportunity. But even something like Care.com, which we just bought earlier this year, that wasn't growing very fast when we bought it. Hopefully, we can get it growing uh, much faster again. It's a 15-year-old company. It's It's been around for a while. But we think that there are startups within companies and even within companies that have been around a while. And the physical assets of MGM, we think, are actually enormously valuable for the, the digital play in delivering customers a real or exciting, thrilling 360 experience. So let me ask you a variation of a question you've been getting for the past few days. Why a minority stake in common equity? Why not, for example, partner with MGM in a different way, invest directly in their online business, and benefit from the upside there in, in, in an environment you know a few things about, the digital world, as opposed to a company that has, again, you know, physical assets, thousands of employees, and furthermore, a business that at the moment is um, sort of flat on its back because of COVID-19. Yeah, first of all, I don't think that opportunity was available to us. But the other thing that's really interesting about MGM right now is we think it's a great value opportunity for the reasons that you just said. It is, I mean, they, they just announced a quarter with revenue down 90%. That's not, of course, a, a pleasant place for any company to be. But their, their the underlying assets of that business are we think just as valuable coming out of COVID or if not more so than, than going into COVID. And there's, we believe the world comes back to normal at some point. We don't know when, nobody really knows when, but we do believe that people are going to want to congregate again together. People are going to want to be entertained again. They're going to want to have fun. They're going to want to travel. And MGM is really well positioned in there to take advantage of that when it happens, whenever it happens. So Barry Daler, your chairman, told me back in late June, not long ago, that he believes behavior returns to normal after the pandemic, whenever that is. I can't tell you when after is, and I suspect you can't tell me either. And I just heard some of that in what you were saying. How much a part of this thesis is the return to normal? Because, as you know, it's a point of huge debate. Do we go back to normal? And if we don't go back to normal 100 percent, what percent do you think we will go back to normal? Well, look, there are... You're right, there are degrees of normal. I believe we go back 100% to normal. I think there are things that change relative to what 100% back to normal is. I think there are new behaviors around people's use of technology. People, you know, I think that, that take a business of ours like Vimeo where, where small businesses are now using video to communicate with their customers. I think people will do something like that, use video to communicate with their customers forever from now on. I think that this accelerated some things like that, but are they gonna still have customers? Yes, are they gonna have still have customers in their restaurant, in their store, in their whatever it may be? Yes, absolutely. People are going to, to congregate for things that are fulfilling with a physical presence and a restaurant is fulfilling with a physical presence. So is a casino, so is entertainment, shows, those things. It's really nice, fun to be in the room and for those things, there is no it, it, it won't be a digital replacement. People will want to, to gather. People like to be in crowds. They like to be with other people. Joey, whenever anyone signs checks that add up to a billion dollars, there's always an interesting story behind it. Whose idea was it? Where did that idea come from to look into online gaming? Because your company has been in travel. It's been in dating. It's been in, you know, home digital bookings for home repairs. So that's a curious Thing, right? And secondly, how did you end up deciding to invest in MGM as opposed to another casino company? Sure. It's, uh, I think it actually originated with one of our board members who said that this, they'd been looking at it and thought it was an interesting idea. And uh, we started to do a little bit of work. We were also doing work on generally things that we thought were uh, fantastic winning brands, long-term winning brands, 
leaders in their categories, but that were, we thought, short-term impacted uh, by the, the pandemic. And we looked at all of those things and said, okay, there, there were, as you'd imagine, a number of things there. And then we said, okay, well, where are ones where we think there's an interesting angle? Because just buying value is not really standalone interesting to us. We're not buying, you know, coal mines or things like that. We said, where's opportunities where the there's an option on something digital, there's an option on a transformation. And when we saw MGM, we said, wow, this, this kind of does all of those things. There's a great business that we think is, is temporarily undervalued, but that has the capital to make it to the other side, uh, number one. And number two, there is this option on this massive digital transformation. It is a $450 billion category globally, about a third of that in the US and less than 10% online. And it is just inevitable that a much larger percentage of that, much larger than 10%, if you go forward three years, five years, 10 years, a much larger percentage is going to be online. And MGM, it, it, and in their partnership with the joint venture, is, is going to be able to participate in that, we think, in a very meaningful way. Joey, one of the things that struck me on your conference call with analysts that you had the other day was a question. In particular, it was your answer to this question. You were asked what IAC brings to the table with MGM, and you were really candid. You said, we don't know. We don't know exactly what we're bringing to the table, but you said we didn't know what we brought to the table way back in the days of Expedia either. That answer counts on a lot of trust among shareholders. Are you perhaps a little bit worried that if things don't pan out with MGM quickly enough, there's a lot of volatility in the stock price that you have to report on a mark-to-market -market basis, that you're going to be disappointing those shareholders? I'm always worried about disappointing shareholders. I'm always worried about thing, bets we make not working out, and that that could certainly happen here. I think I have a, we collectively have a pretty high degree of confidence that the value that we see in this business exists meaningfully. We also have a very high degree of confidence that the digital transformation in this category is inevitable. The one thing that that is the hard bet, and that's the hard bet in everything we've ever done, is are, are, is the team that we're betting on, is the entity that we're betting on going to be the one that executes and wins? And that is, I think, these guys have as good a shot as any. I think the, the steps they've been taking are the right ones, and, and so we're really excited about that.